The Hat Man. What is the Hat Man? Is this the Hat Man? What about this? How about these? Are you aware that the majority of humanity's cultures have observed this shadow monster independently from one another seemingly since the beginning of civilized society? Maybe even longer? The Hat Man is most often described as a shadowy figure standing six to ten feet tall. It has seemingly no discernible characteristics other than a soupy black void-like appearance, and in some depictions, two pinprick glowing crimson eyes. His namesake comes from his trademark large-brimmed hat, the edges of which extend past his shoulders. As with any unknowable entity, the drip is on point. This being often appears in the corner of rooms or the foot of one's bed, doing God knows what. It does not always come alone, sometimes accompanied by other shadow people. Whenever it does work with associates, there's always been a sense that the hat man is in charge. The entity has been reported independently in numerous different cultures and societies, and some think that the hat man is ingrained deep within a universal and archaic part of human consciousness. The hat man's presence is often associated with intense fear and paranoia. Among other scenarios, this figure commonly appears to those who are under the spell of sleep paralysis. The victim awakes, unable to move. They open their eyes to see their bedroom, unaltered, save for an otherworldly, alien figure looming over them from the darkest corner in the edge of their vision. Two piercing blood-red pupils burning a hole into their retinas. This is, of course, only one way to see the hat man. Another more notable way to summon the hat man is one that has recently been repopularized in meme culture. That is, excessive drug consumption. The hat man's drug of choice is Benadryl, and more broadly, deliriance in general. Some people associate the hat man with overconsumption of any drug, but this is more in a meme context. The delirium's namesake comes from the word delirium, which is defined as a serious change in mental abilities. It results in confused thinking and a lack of awareness of someone's surroundings. This is an incredibly apt description for what delirians tend to do. Delirians are unique amongst other hallucinogens because they can cause true hallucinations, which are hallucinations indistinguishable from reality. Let me give you an example. If you asked a sober person the directions to the library, they would probably give you the directions to the library. If you ask somebody on Delirians the directions to the library, there's a decent chance they'll just rip off all their clothes and scream about the shadow people. Other than the hat man, people taking Delirians often report hallucinating insects, smoking fake cigarettes, or seeing other shadow people. These drugs are considered to be the most terrifying and least pleasant hallucinogenic drugs on the market. Why would anyone willingly subject themselves to this, you might ask? Most often, deliriants are only consumed because some rando bought a pack of off-brand pink pills from CVS and didn't think through their actions clearly, or th anything clearly for the next 48 hours for that matter. From Wikipedia, the effects of deliriants are as follows. The hallucinogenic experience in delirium produced is characterized by stupor, agitation, confusion, confabulation, I don't know what the fuck that means, emotional bluntness, dysphoria, memory deficits, incoherency of thoughts, hypo or hyperactivity, lucid intervals, akesthesia, I don't know what the fuck that means either, realistic visual hallucinations or illusions and regressions to phantom behaviors such as disrobing, plucking, or interacting with imaginary objects or scenes. The effects of these kinds of anticholergic compounds have also been likened to delirious fevers, sleep walking, and fugue states, or psychotic episodes. In addition to this, delirians can cause memory loss, meaning they can make you forget large portions of the trip. This can result in the user suddenly regaining consciousness in unknown places, or forgetting that they've taken a drug in the first place. Some think that the hat man's appearance comes from a primal fear of the unknown, an ingrained evolutionary scar left from strange outsiders with ominous intentions. A ghostly figure with no traits save for an uncanny valley human shape embedded in the minds of every single member of humanity for an undetermined reason. Or something goofy like that. The theory goes that when the mind is under great stress, say for example, sleep paralysis or a Benadryl binge, the brain would hallucinate this being to rationalize the experience in the mind of the experiencer. Another theory about the hat man is that he's some sort of supernatural entity. This would make sense for the sleep paralysis theory, as well as the drug-induced theory. I don't know why it would, but just take my word for it, I guess. So basically, I guess he's like a Benadryl demon. The Benadryl demon? You know, in high school, I knew a guy who had the nickname Benadryl Demon. He's not doing too well. Others still think that the shape of the hat man may be a map of the body imprinted in the brain for the purpose of locomotion and proprioception, the perception of your body in space. Because your brain is in such an altered consciousness, it's theorized that it could project this map into reality during the state of dissociative delirium. The large hat may be a distortion due to the exceptional amount of allocation of space in the human brain related to advanced reasoning and intelligence. That last part is just me talking out of my ass, but I'm pretty sure that the first part was someone else talking out of theirs, so whatever. Now some may think, I don't believe in anything unless a famous person tells me to. To those idiots, I present to you dedicated hat man awareness. 
awareness advocate, Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron fucking Rodgers. That's right, ever since he went to Peru and did ayahuasca, he has been witnessing the hat man routinely. According to Rogers, sometimes he appears in the distance, usually veiled by darkness holding the corpse of a dead rabbit, and sometimes a blade. Rogers claims he is afraid to be in the locker room alone, as the lights flicker and go on and off one by one. It's behind him, not even breathing hard. He can hear the feet hitting the ground in a constant rhythm. He runs to his car, opens the door, and slams it behind him, and locks the car door as fast as he can. Well, that's spooky. I don't know where I was going with this, and now I suddenly fear that I'm just mocking a nice man with a case of severe HPPD. And I'm canceled. And everyone already forgot. All right, back to the video. <clears throat> Look, we can have our noses in these books all day, but what has reading ever taught anyone? Nothing, because no one can read. They're all just lying to sound smarter than me. Instead of just wasting more time, money, and humans trying to speak directly with this hat man, we have contacted world-renowned psychedelic researcher and hat man expert, Josie Kins. So, Josie, have you ever seen the hat man? Kind of. Uh, so the first time I used diphenhydramine, a delirium compound, at the age of, I suppose it was 17 to 18, I had never heard of the hat man, but I did see a shadowy figure wearing a bowling hat. And looking back on it, I wonder if that was British Hatman because I was living in the UK at the time. What do you believe the Hatman is? Real? Hallucination? A demon? Some sort of Lovecraftian dream hat product placement? I think there are two components to people experiencing this figure. One is sort of innate and occurs due to basic neurology, I suppose. And the other is culture. The more you hear about the Hatman, the more he's likely to appear. So he's sort of a mimetic cryptid of sorts. I think Hatman is essentially a shadow person, which is a common form of hallucination. I tend to take the materialist stance when it comes to hallucinatory experiences in general. For example, I don't believe that DMT entities are real or from a higher dimension or anything like that. And I think the same applies to the Hatman. Shadow people are a very common hallucination that people have during states of sleep deprivation, delirium psychosis, stimulant psychosis, things like that. And they seem to just be the most sick form of a hallucinatory entity. So you see a person, a humanoid figure, but they lack detail. They're just a dark, shadowy figure. And I've been thinking about this a lot, but if you're going to play off of a silhouette of a human being, one very basic way to make it look more distinct is to add a hat <laughs> to the silhouette, which I think is why it happens so frequently, because it's just a very simple thing that the brain can do to create a more notable figure. If you like this video, you should like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll feed you Benadryl till you see the hat man. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Okay, bye.